we do have to win elections and change policy. And simultaneously, we have to do the bigger winning of reconnecting as humans, doing the deeper work that's not about winning electorally, but that's about winning back all of our humanity. Hi, Vicki Robin here, host of What Could Possibly Go Right, a project of the Post Carbon Institute in which we interview cultural scouts, people who see far and serve the common good, asking them each our one question. In the midst of all that seems to be going wrong or going awry, what could possibly go right? And my guest today is Billy Wimsat. He's the founder and executive director of the Movement Voter Project. He has more than 25 years of experience in journalism, philanthropy, organizing, and social entrepreneurship, and has advised hundreds of donors to strategically invest tens of millions of dollars in hundreds of organizations and initiatives in 48 states. He prides himself on talent scouting, offering nurturing, supportive coaching, and facilitating a spirit of strategic collaboration. Over the years, his work in partnership with many others has helped to swing hundreds of close local, state and federal elections and to pass hundreds of progressive policies. Founding and building the Movement Voter Project and its C3 counterpart Movement Voter Fund has been the culmination of decades of work to support movements and progressive electoral and social change. Before NVP, Billy co-founded several efforts, including Game Changer Networks, League of Young Voters, Generational Alliance, Ready for Warren, Solidaire Network, Coffee Party, Vote Mob, Student Power, and Rebuild the Dream. He is the author or editor of six books on social change, and his writing has appeared in the Chicago Tribune, Washington Post, The Nation, and Vibe. And now here's my conversation with Billy. Thanks. Okay. Welcome, Billy Wimsack, to What Could Possibly Go Right. Your current project, the Movement Voter Project, brilliantly empowers local organizers and small groups, often people of color, to get out the vote in swing states. And you are unabashedly progressive and believe we can have a progressive decade or decades or future. And you are also unabashedly a possibility thinker with some sort of unshakable faith that whatever is going on, something in there could go right. And so that's kind of my kind of guy. So while you are passionate now about the Movement Voter Project, I want to talk not about the project, but with the person who conceived of it, what we call a cultural scout, the person who scans the horizon for possibilities. I'm asking that Billy, what do you see emerging now amidst all the news about climate threats and all the social unrest and vaccine mandates and anti-vax revolts and what we teach in schools and abortion limits and pushback meant all of this uh, unrest around us. And the list goes on and on. Where do you see shifts in the wind, emerging sanity and maturity, opportunities not for bipartisanship, but for collaboration on climate disruptions? So where is your faith in democracy being confirmed in reality? Or to paraphrase it in our one core question, in the midst of all that seems to be going awry, what could possibly go right? What could possibly go right, Vicki? <laughs> I love this. I love this. Well, I was thinking about this and it. I wanted to go back in time a little bit to the mid nineties when, um, Uh, you and I were both doing movement stuff out there and there wasn't a lot of movements happening in the mid nineties, right? In the late nineties, there was the, you know, movement around the WTO and then the Iraq war movement. And then, and and now it's almost like a foregone conclusion that it's like, you know, we had the dreamers, we had, you know, the um, Black Lives Matter movement. We had, you know, huge, you know, climate protests you know, like every wave of protest is the biggest one we've ever had, you know? And, um, and that's, I, I remember growing up in the eighties and nineties and being like, wait, I read about these movements in the sixties, where are our movements? Where are, and it was, you know, it was this idea, like we, we should have a movement again, you know? And there were bits and pieces of movement, 
um, and we were trying to quilt them together. But now it really does feel like we actually have a movement of movements, you know? And I, I remember um, around the time of Occupy, I do, I do both political organizing and donor organizing. And I remember in the early days of, of Occupy getting involved in um, a movement-oriented donor circle. Um, it was, that's uh, called Solidaire. And, and in the course of that, um, the project I do now, Movement Voter Project, kind of grew out of that. And I remember in 2014, 2014, you know, was one of these backlash to Obama midterms that it looks like we're having another one coming, <laughs> right? And, um, and I, was, I was working on um, getting out the vote in key Senate states like Kansas and Iowa and Alaska and Georgia and Michigan. And I remember, and, and donors would say, hey, are there any groups in Kansas and Alaska that we should be donating to? And I was like, oh, yes. And I made a Google Doc. And, you know, I was like, here, here are groups you should give to. And that, that actually turned into the website that turned into Movement Voter Project. And that back then, it was kind of like a novelty, you know, like, oh, we don't, to, to impact elections, you don't just have to give to candidates or parties. There are local organizations yeah. we've never heard of in everywhere, you know? Um, and, and now, like looking back um, and, and, and last cycle, we helped move like a hundred million dollars to, to, you know, over 500 organizations all over the country. And especially in the wake of the Georgia runoffs, it's actually become sort of like common sense that people know, you know, it wasn't just, you know, Warnock and Stacey Abrams, that there are these groups like Black Voters Matter. And people have heard of the groups, some of the groups now, like George, New Georgia, you know, and, and there are all these organizations that started in the wake of the 2016, you know, uh, Trump winning and people having a huge reckoning. And all these people are like, all right, let's let's get together with our friends. Let's raise money for these, you know, these House candidates in 2018. And then a bunch of those groups came to us late in the 2018 cycle or, or early in 2019. They're like, yeah, we're not quite sure who to raise money for now. And we hear you know about these groups in these states, you mm -hmm. know? And so, so pro there are probably about 20 groups we've worked with that are just like regular people that start organizing, you know, everyone they know to donate to these candidates. And now every single one of those groups also is raising money for local organizations, mm -hmm. you know, either as well as candidates or instead of. So that's, that's, that's actually a big change, you know, um, as well. And it, and it's so funny. We, um, I live in, in Western Massachusetts and we actually did this thing here. You have one of them behind me. We actually made lawn signs that say movement really big, you know, cause people are used to putting up lawn signs for a candidate or, mm -hmm. you know, a school picnic or whatever, you know, XYZ festival. And, and so this idea of the movement is a thing. It's not just Bernie, it's not just Black Lives Matter. It's a whole movement you know, that is a multifaceted movement of movements that, that honestly doesn't actually exist, right? Shh, doesn't actually exist, but we are imagining it into being, this movement of movements that is led by people all over the country who we've never heard of. You know, we, we have this joke, there's a, a funny little bookstore near where I live um, called Books You Don't Need in a Place You Can't Find. Right, it's the, the how they advertise <laughs> this bookstore. So we we say organizations you've never heard of in swing states where you don't live. You know, mm -hmm. that's it's gonna save us. So I um I love that, and I love I love that this this kind of fiction of a movement is becoming more and more real in more and more places, and it's more and more um, multifaceted. You know, I, I feel like. My mom was asking me actually recently, and she's like, what are the issues a lot of these groups work on? Are there groups that work on climate? Are there groups? And I'm like, guess what, mom? The new thing is most of these groups work on all the issues, 
Like they, like they see them all interconnected. They're working on a climate justice issue. They're working with, you know, um, neighbors who who and who are struggling with immigration status. And they're they're working on policing and they're working on economic justice and they're working on local food. You know, there are all these low, there's like a whole new generation of organizations that maybe started out doing this one thing and then realized as they grew and they listened to, to local community members, oh, you know, we need to we need to become more broad. And so this idea of of like a progressive movement and a multifaceted progressive kind of vision and worldview, you know, the, the, those those lawn signs that say like, you know, love is love and no human is illegal and black lives matter and science right. is, you know, it's like all the things on the lawn sign, that yeah. wasn't a thing even 10 years ago, you know? Yeah. And, and so, so I feel like that is, you know, and, and now we have, you know, this progressive, there was, there was a progressive ca caucus in Congress. Like I remember 10 years ago, it was like the progressive caucus, they have 60, 70 members. Nobody cares. Like they have zero influence. <laughs> they're, they're not like, they're like marginal, you know? And now the progressive caucus, like Pramila Jayapal, you know, who was like, you know, ran this organization in Washington state, like, you know, one Washington, you know, um, uh, was that the name of it? Anyway, one Washington. One America. Uh, one America now. Thank you. Thank you. Good. We got a, the Washington state correction going on over here. So, you know, she was, she was a local organizer, you know, just like all the, the folks that were supporting around the country. Now she's not just in Congress. She is negotiating with you know, Biden and with, you know, Manchin and Pelosi, she is like a player in the game and, and she's not even the left pole. There's another left pole, which is the squad, you know, who are articulating things you'd never see or hear about in Congress, you know, like just to, to think about like St. Louis, you know, um, you know, five years ago, it was just like, you know, the wake of Ferguson and, you know, just everything was bad. You know, now you have the first very progressive black mayor of St. Louis, a, a um, progressive black district attorney at the city level and the county level. You have a progressive majority on the St. Louis city council, you know, that is, that's, that's passing all these policies. And a lot of that grew out of the movement, you know, um, in Ferguson. And so I think that there are, um, and then, oh, and out of that comes Cori Bush, you know, who, when, um, when the, the negotiations are happening um, in, in Congress, you know, she sleeps outside the Congress. She was like, I was homeless. I'm gonna sleep outside until we pass, you know, a better, you know, a better uh, deal for for people, and and she actually has some impact. That's huge. That wasn't happening before, you know. So so there are all these all these these seeds that have been planted over the years that are growing and that are growing together. You know, I, I really think about the movement as a garden that's like growing together in all these different ways, and it's it's just you know. It's, it's beautiful to be involved in the movement for decades because you get to see it grow. And this person who is an intern then has an idea and creates a whole new thing. And, you know, it's, 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 did you say yummy? It's, it's like, it's, it's like a very luscious experience as well as painful yeah. sometimes. <laughs> so I, I love the fact that what you're saying is you know we use the term movement and it's actually about movement it's about things are moving it's about so you, it's almost like the picture that's forming in my mind is that is that you've been watching something that's in motion and growing and as it as it moves and grows it connects naturally not because some consultant decided well we should like link up these two movements but they're they're growing together it's it, it, you're painting a picture of something that's 
quite organic. Um, and it, I'm, I'm curious about the word that you used of fiction, that movements are also fictions, that there is a, a there's something about naming, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, okay, I'm gonna, I'm right now we're, we're making, we're doing this. We're drawing a circle around something and naming it in our conversation and it's adding reality to it. Yes. And, and so it's because things are happening so fast in our gen right now in our, you know, not even, not, you know, like I don't, you can't even name it in generations. It's like, Oh, the, the people who are like the generation born in 2020. And then there was the 2021 generation, you know, um, because yeah. things are so much in motion mm -hmm. that this quality of noticing and naming and celebrating that I'm hearing you do is, is a piece of having some agency not force, but some agency in, in moving things along. And, and we're all sort of out here naming things. We're all noticing things and naming things like where I am, I'm working on issues around local food, affordable housing, you know, the standard things that every community thinks about. And so I just, I think there's something powerful in that quality of noticing that generated the project that you're working on it's not that you came sat you know alone in a room and came up with an idea you you noticed and your friends noticed it was a social noticing not a personal noticing those are just some themes that I'm picking out does that resonate yeah I love that I love that it, you know I just thought of a couple other little kind of like little I think you call them little green shoots of you know of hope um, there's, there's a new effort, um, that, that people are doing. It turns out our electric utility, um, many of our electric utilities around the country that decide, you know, is our energy going to come from clean or dirty sources are democratically elected co-ops. Mm -hmm. And so people are run. I have a friend who's doing work in Alaska and she told me, Hey, um, there's there's eight elections this year that we're we're working on to kind of flip um, these these two electric utility co-ops and and if if enough seats flip then they can potentially shut down two coal plants. They they won six out of the eight elections in like rural Alaska and you know they're often decided by like a hundred votes or you know like very small numbers of votes and renewable candidates were running on that and winning, you know, in, in rural Alaska. Um, there's there's a, a, a native organization that we funded in um, Iowa called Great Plains Action Society. Um, and, and they came up with, you know, the, the, when we talk about Thanksgiving, there's always like, ah, Thanksgiving, we <laughs> love the gratitude and the thanks, but like the history of it is, you know, really problematic, you know? And so she came up with this idea of truth giving, you know, which, mm -hmm. so the, I, I feel like there's so many, um, and, and by the way, part of what's, what's scary is this is happening on the, you know, the right wing side as well. There's, I was going to say that this is not exclusive to, to progressives. It's like an equal and opposite. There's rooms over there where people are noticing similar things. Yeah. Things that were very marginal, like like Nazism and QAnon conspiracies are, are like quickly moving from the margin to the center, you know, on that side as well. So we have an epic, um, an epic situation here, but in, and when I say about the progressive decade, because we initially went into the, you know, how do we make the 2020s a progressive decade and build on, and by the way, you know, Biden right now, everyone's like, Ugh, Biden, you know, demoralized, you know, like, um, Biden is is actually like significantly more progressive than Obama or any president in in right. recent memory because of all of the movements that have happened that have made you know if Obama were president now he'd be more progressive than 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 he is but you know people were like 
people had mixed feelings about Obama, but basically liked the guy. You know, basically we're like, this is this is good, <laughs> this is progress, you know? And, you know, Biden is someone who like most people like me like didn't like, we're like, oh, Biden, you know, like, you know. Who... So I have a question because I, I, I something I'm curious about. Um, so let's let's do run a little scenario that that you have you're in your room with all your people and and imagining a future and getting your can and then there's this other little room where sincere people we're not going to diss them sincere people who are worried about many things that you're worried about they just have different solutions they're dreaming and scheming and and they're doing their signs and their banners and stuff like that imagine that each one of these rooms could send one person forward to have a conversation. I mean, what is the conversation that you would want to have between these, these movements that just by their very fact that they're movements, they're doing slogans and polarizing and, and accusing and stuff like that. Yeah. Is there a sweet spot in here somewhere that is also part of what could go right? Oh, I love that. I mean, I, it's so funny in my heart of hearts. I don't, I'm not like a left-wing person. Like you can't fly a plane with just one wing. Like, you know, I grew up reading, you know, right-wing thinkers and thinking like, you know, they're making a lot of good points, you know, and I see where they're coming from. And, um, and so, yeah, in a dream world and, you know, and, um, and Van Jones does a lot of this. I think, you know, he's kind of one of the best people at, at it. It's like a lot of listening, a lot of like, let's find common ground. We agree on the opioid crisis. We agree on, um, you know, some as aspects of criminal justice reform. You know, there are elements in the right wing movement that, you know, recognize climate change is a thing that care about localism that care about, you know, that, I mean, I, I got to, um, I get to hitchhike all over the country when I was younger. I got in a lot of cars with a lot of like rock wit ribbed right wing folks who, who were like the nicest people in the world who took me in, you know, nice to me, white guy, <laughs> you know, there, you know, there was context to that, but, you know, lot, like there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, I believe that if we could get in a room together, you know, there's a lot that we could could find common ground on in all sorts of ways. And 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 the way things are set up is, you know, is set up to do the opposite, is set up to polarize against each other. And, you know, I have a friend who's organizing um, a canvas in West Virginia to try to get mansion you know, to, to vote on the For the People Act. And they're going to lots of doors of Trump voters, you know, and talking to them about the For the People Act and dark money and gerrymandering and people having a voice. And, and you know, and Trump voters are, for the most part, just as committed to these issues as the Democratic voters are and are sending selfies of like, here's my MAGA hat. And like, you know, Senator Manchin, you know, vote for the, you know, uh, for the, it's now the Let America or Freedom to Vote Act, you know, so at a human level, there's a, so much we agree on. And, and it is a lot of this polarized BS that is making us not feel like we're, you know, on the same team. It's so interesting that it's imagining your people who are out there canvassing and having, you know, human conversations, if, if you lead on the foot of your positionality, then you're going to get it slammed in the door. If you lead on a foot of relationship, like, how are you today? You know, what are the things you're concerned about? Here's the things I, you know, I don't, I'm, you know, I'm not an organizer, so I don't know what the script is, but, but basically that's a huge opportunity. You have so many people out there knocking on doors and on a question not of candidates, but as you said earlier, on issues. Like, what are we gonna do about the local food or those, you know, what are we gonna do about these things? That may, that just, to me, that that has this feeling of sort of this quirky little odd feeling of not exactly left or right or up or down, but something like human. 
<laughs> so yeah, there's something that's being called deep canvassing, right? Uh, that's kind of like a term of art, and and you said something about like you know what the script is. Part of deep canvassing is you don't go in with a script, right? You go in with lit questions and stories, you know, wow. and and you have like a real conversation. And you try to actually build a relationship. And because so much of how people operate is we operate in tribes, right? right? We're, you know, so like if you're part of this church and, you know, this set of friends or this parent group, you know, um, and the worldview is this and that trans translates to like listening to these news sources and sharing this on Facebook, you know, you can very quickly become a QAnon person, you know, and, and be a, a perfectly wonderful, reasonable person, you know, who just, um, you know, went down a particular tribal rabbit hole. And, um, but you're still human inside there, you know, and, and care about the same things I care about with my kids, you know? And so, I, you know, we have to somehow scale human conversation totally yeah politics is a conversation i mean this is a little idealistic but it is a conversation it's a conversation about where are we going to go together in the future because we're in a you know what do you call it like a three-legged race or potato sack race or something like that you know we're we're really all stuck in the same game and you know we're not getting out of the ball field you know so we have to develop some some rules here that will get us where we want to go. It's it's almost like, in some ways, the le you know I'm not talking about the extremes, the sort of like almost cartoon level extremes, but I think what what is is there's a troubling feeling that's sending people out of the center and toward extremes, and the troubling feeling is they're not telling us the truth, and they don't have our best interest in heart. And, you know, we can solve our problems better than they can do it up there in Washington or, you know, whatever, you know, is there's it's just a, there's a, there's a disquiet and, and maybe this deep canvassing is a piece of, um, it's like a listening project for the disquiet. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like we kind of have to operate on two planes at once because we are facing existential threat with with our climate and, you know, with our democracy. And so things do have to, we do have to win elections and change policy and, and migrate, you know, where we're getting our energy from, you know, really quickly and do, do a bunch of other things, you know, or, or we're going to go, you know, down a negative spiral, you know, um, a self-reinforcing negative spiral. And so, so we actually do have to win <laughs> those things right. and simultaneously we have to do the bigger winning of reconnecting as humans and right. doing the deeper work that is, that's not about winning electorally, but that's about winning back all of our humanity and that, you know, and, and the left at its worst mirrors the right in a kind of like fight or flight fear or whatever. And, um, you know, we, we can be guilty of, of, you know, like the right is fundamentally, you know, rooted in, in like kind of fear and, and power and control. And the left is like fundamentally, but, but we all have the different impulse, you know, the left is fundamentally rooted in like community, beloved community and, and whatnot, but each one has components of the other you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and so I, at a deep, deep level, you know, our, our greatest tool has to be love and building beloved community, you know, because we can never, we can never actually like change things sustainably with fear, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. And I love that, that, um, build, beloved community as the sort of the secret agenda of, of, um, of political organizing. And 
um, you know, in the long game, you guys are playing a, a long game of, you know, small scale community groups, supporting them in reaching out to their neighbors. I mean, it's a really beautiful thing. It's about winning elections, but it's also about this winning the beloved community. Uh, and uh, so all I have to say is more power to you, <laughs> more power to this. Um, yeah, and that I think, I think there's a, there are clues in here for people who, um, who want to be a force for whatever they think the good is, the thing that's going to help everybody survive. So I want to thank you, Billy. Do you have any final um, wise words for us? Oh gosh, um, let's let's make magic together. You know, mm -hmm. like this has to be fun. Like we can't you know, we can't do this alone. So let's go. Thank you, brother Billy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a five-star review so that this hopeful message can get out to more people. Check out Post Carbon Institute's Resilience website for show notes and for more guest information. Thanks also to Asher Miller, Amy Burringrood, and Clara Winter of Post Carbon Institute, plus production assistant Michelle Wig from frugalityandfreedom.com. <laughs>